Ah, getting there. Lemons. Oh, what's up, man? Come on in. Wait, whoa, sanitize. No, you done sanitize the bottle also. And then sanitize your hands again for touching the bottle. We had an incident yesterday. Somebody didn't sanitize the bottle. Now, yeah, apparently there's a case. No, it's in the pack. He, he brought it. He was the delivery guy. Okay, okay, come inside, man. You, you seem clean. That's that's nice. Yeah, man, it's it's cool to be here. Oh, I must say, oh, man, they've taken the fun out of everything, man. Now they're just doing challenges. Have you done a challenge? I'm sure you look like a don't rush challenge. No, savage challenge. No, 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 ice bucket challenge. You know what you should stop doing? Challenges. Yeah, please, do the nothing challenge. You did it, well done. <laughs> Here's your award. Jokes. This is the you don't get an award challenge. Didn't see that coming out, did you? You know who doesn't do challenges? Great people. People who do amazing things in life. Like this next man. You've heard his voice everywhere. You've seen his face everywhere. I mean, if you say his name three times in the mirror, an invoice appears. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Jason Goliath. thinking about because we're now you know the levels are relaxed and then depending on when you when you're watching this it's almost kind of becoming a thing that we survived the trauma that we've all been through and now are on the other side i'm like i can't wait for 20 years from now where we look back at this time and the hilarious stuff that we've all been through for me i'm looking beyond the pain of today and and looking forward to the story that we will tell our children about how we got those scars you know what i mean you know when your child starts asking you foolish questions like geez mom why is uh, your face two different colors colors. Uh, why have you dark on top and, and light at the bottom? Because they don't know about masks. They don't know about all of these things. For me, masks have been some of my favorite things. Masks have protected us from stunk back mensa. You know those people with the honky breath. They're the most confident people. I don't understand it. You were eating kakas last night and now you want to tell me secrets. And those people, they don't know social distancing. Those people always want to be here. They always want to be here and they always have like an extra lung because when we speak it's normal. But when they speak, you know you can feel the breath. Your, your shirt starts. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, why are you breathing so much? Why is there so much breath? And I've always had it. I've always been that guy that buys chappies, not for me, but I'm buying chappies just in case I meet one of those people that wants to be here. You know, when, you, when you've met someone, when they walk in and breathe, the temperature in the room changes. When they breathe, smoke alarms start going off, small children and dogs start running away. Their, their breath almost has like a color. It looks like those old dental commercials where you can see the corona coming out you know what i mean those people i'm always like thank goodness now they've got to wear a mask and what you notice about them they're always crying why because they're smelling their own stunk mont rotten sis thank goodness for mask a mask has saved me so many times other than the fact that i don't have to smile anymore because I'm fat, my eyes look like I'm smiling all the time. So for me, embrace the mask. If you're not wearing a mask anymore, put the mask back on because it's probably you with your stunk mont. That's why you don't even want to wear the mask. I burped once. I smelled a Russian from 2007. Guys, tell me Pineken was not a thing in your neighborhood. That's what my dad calls it. He doesn't call it pineapple beer, he calls it Pineken. And you know why we call it Pineken? Because you saw rich people for the first time in their lives making their own beer in their backyard. I saw people on Discovery. They pay medical aid, but they are still there buying pineapples and making them rot, using yeast. Now people are mixing, Googling recipes. These things were hilarious, because it was always those people now, nah, but it's craft beer. I was like, it's not craft beer, it's cock beer. It's close, but it's definitely not the same thing. What are you talking about, craft? My dad is one of those people, because my dad loves beer. Listen, my dad has beer with Kellogg's in the morning. My dad is a beer guy. My dad calls me up the other day, and he's just like, how's it, how's it? And I'm like, are we? And he's like, listen, it's been an explosion. So I'm like, an explosion? What do you mean? You live on a farm. My dad lives like outside of Scott, but there in the sugarcane fields. I'm like, what did you do? He's like, now there was an explosion. And I was like, what happened? He's like, no, the pineacon. I'm like, how did the pineacon explode? He's like, I didn't burp it. I'm like, what do you mean burp it? Did you have another child again? And you didn't tell me about it. And he's like, no, I stopped having children seven years ago. I'm like, who are these people anyway? I didn't burp it. I'm like, what do you mean you got to burp it? He's like, no, because you put yeast in it, you have to burp it. What happens is you've got to open the tent. You know that thing, you've got it, and then he didn't do the nts, and then 2.30 in the morning, he says the thing exploded. Where did he keep it? In his bedroom. Why? Because he's dumb. He's dumb. The only wise thing about him was he said, yeah, at least I had a big cock before I went to sleep. Otherwise, it could have got messy. That thing woke me up rough. And I'm just like, Dad, take it easy. For goodness sake, just calm down, relax. He says the only way to enjoy Pineken is you've got to add 
20% imagination. Because he says it tastes cuck and it doesn't really make you drunk. But if you just imagine, if you just remember those times when you were actually drunk, you're going to be fine. I think my, one of my favorite things has been like going to a mall and going out because, you know, previously I didn't enjoy malls because, you know, people want selfies, you know, kind of been on TV. You know, once you're on TV, it doesn't matter that you're fat anymore, even thin people like you. I love going to a mall now because we're all like in disguise. Like, you know what I mean? When you go to a mall now, it's like that opening scene of the Rambo movie. Remember that scene where Rambo was busy gathering his things, putting that shoe polish on his face for no reason? Now it's just us there, putting on masks, trying to cover our hair. We're busy with sanitizer. We've got the preparation process. Then you get to the mall and it's like everybody's in a scene from one of those crazy movies where there's a war story. Everybody's just watching each other, reminding old aunties, auntie, your mask, mask. There's always that auntie, sorry, your mask, auntie, your mask, your mask, because you forget it in the car. Now we're finally all there, everybody's nervous. Everybody's nervous, and this makes me happy because before it used to only be me that used to get nervous in the mall, but now everybody's nervous. And you know why people are nervous? Because there's that security guard at the door. You know that one has taken his job far too seriously. Like when he grew up, he was watching Bad Boys and he thought he's gonna be Martin Lawrence and Will Smith. And now he works at Cresta Center and he wears steel tip shoes for no reason. But now that we've given him that gun, because you know you've seen him with those, you know those thermometers, where he's given him that gun where the guy is, instead of holding it normally, he's even holding it a little bit like a tortsy. Like, you know what I mean? You walk up to the, oh, he thinks he's Rambo, you know what I mean? He's got the mask on, he's got the camouflage things, and as he comes, he's like, hey, hey, hey sorry, 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 temperature, temperature, ha, ha, not your arm, you're wearing short sleeve, your arm, it's cool. I want your head, I want your head, boy. What makes us nervous, though, is not so much the gun. It's not even the way he's pointing it at your head. It's the beep anxiety, guys. And I know you suffer from beep anxiety because malls have been doing this to me forever. Beep anxiety to finally see everybody suffering, no matter which race or creed or age, everybody stresses, because I don't know what it is. Because why, when they pull that trigger, you gotta wait just for the beep. Because in your mind, it's gonna beep different. Like in your mind, if it just goes beep, you're fine. But if you beep, 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 you, 39 degrees, shit. Somebody call an ambulance. This one is dying. And you don't wanna be, you wanna be between 34, 37, max even 37, you start crossing your fingers. That's the maximum you wanna be. I don't understand why it's gonna take so long. Cause it's in that little period from the time they pull the trigger to the time the beep comes, you just say getting anxious. Cause it's like going for an AIDS test. You know, if you've ever been for an HIV test, even if you've never had sex in the last three years, that thing makes you nervous. You had a test three months ago, it doesn't matter. You're crossing your fingers. I don't know if you think the AIDS is now airborne and you just got it, you get that anxiety. Because you wanna be 34, you wanna be 36, you wanna be 36 and then beep. And then the guy goes, okay, next. I'm like, no, bro, show me the numbers. Show me the numbers. He's like 36.5. I'm like, VR6, boy. All day, every day. Oh, pop, 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 VR6. Inside the mall is where my anxiety normally peaks. And this is where I've had it forever. And you guys are only experiencing it now with the gun. Because what will happen is I'll be there doing my shopping. You know me, I'm a modeler. I go there, buy the triple X size designer clothes, you know. Nice things, me and Okubas Visa, same WhatsApp group, you know what I mean? Just looking cute. Then I'm walking out with my huge bags. You know, they've only got three t-shirts in, but when the t-shirts are my size, you know what I mean? And then, you know, as you walk past those, uh, what do they call them? You know, those shoplifter devices. As you walk past those shoplifter devices, if those things beep, I don't know if it's my Eldorado Parkness, I don't know if it's like my current heritage coming back from a couple of generations ago, but if that thing beeps, even though I know I've paid, even though I know I've never stolen a thing in my life, there's something in me that when that thing beep, 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 I start accusing myself, Jason, did you black out and steal things again? You know, you just start patting yourself down. Now I'm laying on the floor with my hands behind my back and the guy's like no man this one has got a problem sorry sir sorry sir no it wasn't even this thing there's somebody at 39 degrees we sent them home they are going to be fine that anxiety has been with me forever i'm so glad that that anxiety is now with you my whole point is this happiness is not for free happiness is probably the most difficult thing to choose being sad being miserable being depressed suffering from anxiety unfortunately those are the easy choices in this time my advice to you wake up choose and find your happy because nobody's gonna tell her for you nobody's waking up thinking about you and your happiness and how to make you feel better about your cock life so all you've got to do is believe in yourself that's why me i wake up look myself straight in the mirror like this and i'm just like mm, you mean you're going in the world like this boy maybe you should put a condom on i'm jason goliath thank you so much be happy be nice be safe bye bye <laughs> <laughs> ah, Jason Goliath. Oh, man, he wasn't lying. Because, you know, behind the mask, you think it's just a face. But behind the mask, it's a... Oh, hey, you like a skeleton. <laughs> okay, but enough of the stand-up now. Enough. It's enough jokes for now. For now, are you ready? For brave, ready? <laughs>
I know you're ready. Just check this out. Hi, I'm Nancy, and I make it my business to find out the truth. And there's no AMC pot I can't get to the bottom of, and no friend that I can't catch. That's a hot masala. Homemade masala? Huh, please. Who does she think she is? Gorima? Yeah, speaking of soap, but how's your designer? Personal designer? You see that Punjabi over there? I saw five people with the same one. Hey, your money, how's your son? Son, they know. They know you are nurse and you're not a real doctor. The cake was sweet, but the aftertaste was store-bought. The lies I was used to, but the betrayal, I never saw coming. What is this, sir? What? What is this? What? Huh? I don't know. You ate a cake? No, you Ooh. ate a cake. <laughs> Hello? I need your help. Spot, I'm telling you, I think I even know who she bought it from. Yeah, I knew it. I knew it, you know, because the only cake she ever made in her life was her son, huh? I'll get to the bottom of this. I always do. <coughs> ah, ah, no, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. Hey, hey, hey. Good to see you, man. Yeah, it's nice. I wasn't really gonna do that. I know bartenders used to do that. We don't do that anymore. <laughs> Only when there's no water. Uh, but don't worry about me and this class. Uh, our next guy, ah, ladies and gentlemen, he has been a part of the National Arts Festival for the past 25 years. But that doesn't mean shit because so has corruption. You know, he's actually the dildo of comedy because he's small, he's energetic, and <laughs> so much pleasure. Oh my gosh. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Rob Van Feeren. <laughs> So for years I was a, a, like a really fearful flyer until I had the most horrific experience that cured me of my fear forever and I'd like to tell you about it. But first to explain, the origin of my fear comes from the fact that they mess with you before you start even getting on the aeroplane. They start confiscating shit from you that you could never possibly ever hijack an aeroplane with. Like shampoo. What? What are you going to wash that plane right out of the air? I once had a pair of nail clippers confiscated from me before I got an aeroplane. How the fuck am I gonna hijack a plane with a pair of nail clippers? Wow, I wanna cut your nails really far back. It's really sore. I once had a skipping rope confiscated from me before I got the aeroplane. How am I going to hijack an aeroplane with a skipping rope? I'm taking this fucking plane down. I know tricks. Crisscross. Double unders. All I'm saying is I can't live in a world where people are suspicious of shampoo and skipping ropes. Also, okay, I'm just a little bit too sensitive to be suspected of terrorism. Please stop asking me these loaded questions about whether or not I plan on killing people today, okay? Can we all just agree that if I do end up killing someone, it's gonna come as a surprise, all right? And flying these days is even worse, because these days you can't even get on the plane in your hazmat suit because all the seats have been taken by a virus with a passport that's more traveled than you are. I prefer the good old days when all you had to worry about was the plane being hijacked by some fascist terrorist like Steve Hofmeyer who's going to crash the plane in Tal Monument as a protest against, I don't know, DSTV and social progress. And the worst is going through security. You have to take off everything, basically, and, and scan it through the x-ray machine individually just in case you're smuggling a bomb in your hard drive or some magic mushrooms in the, in the CD slot. I mean, guys, it's 2020. Can we not invent an x-ray machine that can see through the bag and the computer at the same time? It's just a suggestion. And then you have to hand your boarding pass to the unhappiest woman you have ever seen in your life whose hair has been pulled back too tightly and who hates you just because you can leave. 
Anyway, I, I get on the plane and then I end up sitting next to the fattest man I have ever seen in my life. And yes, woke people, I know I said fat, okay? But this is not fat shaming. This is more like fat envy. Because when I get fat, people stop putting me in their movies. I go into a casting five kgs overweight. My agent phones me and is like, Rob, I have children to feed. Do you know what kind of pressure that is? Being constantly fucking hungry so that my agent's children won't be. So just to be clear, when I call someone fat, I am simply calling out a privilege that has been taken away from me, okay? I do not have a problem with fat people. So anyway, there I was sitting next to Fatty McFatson, this man who is spilling out of his seat like some sort of giant pink custard. I mean, you couldn't sit next to this man without getting to second base. I couldn't tell where his body ended and mine started. It was like sharing a chair with a beanbag that's struggling to regulate insulin. It's like a massive hot water bottle filled with beef and onion soup. I kept finding snacks and socks and change in his crevices. My ear at one point was right up against his, I don't know, his chest or his lats or his ribcage. I can't tell, but what I could do is hear his organs crying for help. Help, help us. We don't know what we're doing here anymore. We're just swimming around in here. I mean, what's the pancreas doing in the sternum? Backstroke, that's what it's doing. You know the kind of guy I'm talking about, right? It's the kind of guy that no matter what the weather, he's always wearing shorts and flip-flops. Like, he'll go to the coldest places in his shorts and flip-flops. Like visiting his racist brother-in-law in wintry England. Shorts and flip-flops. Hiking through the Arctic tundra. Shorts and flip-flops. What's the coldest place on Earth? The frozen food section in Woolies. Shorts and flip-flops. And this day on that plane was no exception. He was sitting there in all his flip-flop feeted glory. And to top it all off, he's got this one big toenail that for some inexplicable reason, he's just decided to let grow. He's like, go boy, you are free now. It's the kind of toenail that's grown over the toe and along the floor. It's like a toenail with its own central nervous system. It's the kind of man who wakes up in the middle of the night with his foot wrapped around the fridge door and food strewn about him. He's like, oh, what happened? The toenail must eat. That's what happened. And to make matters worse, this giant flabby man with this gargantuan toenail is clearly so comfortable with flying that he's already asleep and his enormous meaty head keeps squishing itself all over my tiny terrified face. And at this point, I actually envy him. I do. I envy the man. I mean, the calm of this man. And now I'm starting to hate myself for not having the courage to be more like him. And now the cognitive dissonance is killing me. So I start taking it out on him. I'm like, <laughs> pushing his giant meat buffet of a face back and my fingers are disappearing into the folds of fat. Get your fat face away from me. We take off and now I have to go to the toilet because I literally just shat myself. So I unbuckle myself and squeeze out next to sleeping beefy over here and I go to the toilet. The toilet in the airplane is the great leveler. I don't care how nonchalant you are about flying. But if you go to the toilet and you press the flush button and this noise happens. You shit yourself. Even the captain is like, what the fuck was that? When that noise happens on the airplane, my balls retreat a full 30 centimeters. My balls are like, Polly, 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 <laughs> What was that, Polly? I don't know, Polly. I heard it too. Polly, I think I shat myself. No, Polly, that wasn't you. Oh, but what was that, Polly? I'm so scared. Okay, calm down, calm down. You know what we should do? We should ask the penis. He was out front. Psst, don't call him that. You know he hates it when you call him that. I'll call him. Hey. Hey, prick, where are you, you cock? I'm trying to get out of the asshole. By the way, we did shit ourselves. So after I clean myself up, I return to my seat and sit down next to the giant sleeping man. And as I'm sitting there, trying to calm down, I hear this voice. Hey, hey, you. It's coming from next to me. I look, I'm sure the man's sleeping. So I check to see if he's sleeping. It's definitely sleeping. So now I'll try to go back to calming myself by reading. And at this instance, it wasn't even one of those shitty magazines. It's, it's the little safety manual. You know the safety manual? The book that tells us what to do when we all die? So I'm sitting there reading through all the various positions in which you can kiss your ass goodbye. And then I hear the voice again. Hey, hey, hey you, down here, down here. It's the toenail. Toenail speaking to me. Yes, it's the bloody toenail, man. What's your bloody problem? I'm, th I'm thinking I'd probably 
I probably shouldn't have had those mushrooms before I got on the plane because they were hard enough to get into the CD slot in the first place. And then I went to the toilet and my balls started talking to each other. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Listen ya. I'm going to hijack this plane. I'm going to hijack this plane. I'm going to kill everyone on board. I'm going to kill you too. You are pretty aggressive for a toenail, bro. Yeah? Well, you try being attached to this us your whole life. I'm going to hijack this plane. I'm going to kill everyone on board. Kill you too. Okay, fine. Do it. Do what you got to do. Oh, fine. I will. Well, okay, we'll go. I'm gonna go. We'll go then. Go now. I'm, I'm going. I'm going right. I will go. I'm going. I'm going. Seatbelt. <laughs> and then this mutant toenail starts dragging this giant sleeping man off of his chair, going, "I'm gonna hijack this plane. I'm gonna hijack this plane." The man does not wake up. At this point, he's fast asleep. His face is slamming on the chair, being dragged along the aisle as the giant mutant toenail drags this enormous man towards the cockpit of the airplane, going, I'm gonna hijack this plane. I'm gonna hijack this plane. And in that moment, I thought to myself, if only they'd let me bring my nail clippers on board. This could have all been avoided. In the end, the mushrooms wore off and I realized there was no fat man. It was just my own suppressed inner self-loathing manifesting as an outdated form of prejudice fueled by the unrealistic expectations of a cruel society obsessed with physical perfection and the subsequent vicious interplay between shame and rage. There wasn't even a plane. I was actually in the botanical gardens the whole time, naked, swaying precariously in the canopy of a thorn tree. The whole thing did incidentally cure me of my fear of flying, though. And as a footnote, the toenail and I, best friends. Okay, I'm Rob and Buren. Here, take some mushrooms. There I was, pre-lockdown, living my best life, walking through the mall. When this one day I decided, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm just gonna browse. I'm gonna leave the mall with something. I just don't know what it is yet. You know, I come across incredible connection. And as always, deals are incredible in that place. But here's where things get weird because as I walk into Incredible Connection, you know that person, the security guard at the door that looks after the Samsungs, you know, the Guardian of the Galaxy? Yeah, Guardian of the Galaxy gets up. I think nothing of it, I carry on on my journey. Now, you know when you go into a place and uh, you're busy looking through things, but you can feel someone is watching you. I'm having this feeling, man, but I'm doing my business, I'm ignoring it because I'm there for the deals. Now eventually I get to the aisle and you know, I'm in the aisle and I'm looking at the things that I'm supposed to be looking at, but I can feel the eyes are piercing my head. They're here, they're here, two of them just here. And uh, I turn my head and I look down the aisle and the security guard standing there like this. So I'm like, is everything okay? Security goes, no, everything's okay, are you okay? I'm, I'm fine. Second time I'm like, no, I'm not gonna profile. Maybe this is how the security guard does the rounds. But here's where things get weird. As I'm browsing, I picked something up and something behind it fell. As I went down to look for it, the security guard went down as well. Now I'm like, no, no, this can't be it. So I thought to myself, wait, 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 make 100% sure Eric Janssen, you are a man of progressive thinking. Don't assume the worst, always assume the best. Maybe you just have a bit of a vibe, but you can obviously disqualify that vibe by changing aisles. That's what I do. I change aisles, I appear in the next aisle and security guard, appears at the bottom of the aisle as well. Now I'm like, no, no, mm -mm, all of that out the window. I'm done, I have to catch the security guard so that I can confront her, right? So I do that thing, you know that thing where if this is the aisle and this is the aisle and these are the products, I do that thing where I leave this aisle to go to this aisle, but I don't really go to this aisle, I stop in line with the products. And I just go back and I stand in that same aisle and I just look down the aisle. So security guard obviously thought I changed. She walks, she loses me, she comes back, she goes, hey! What are you doing? I'm like, lady, why are you watching me? She goes, I don't like the way you look. You look very suspicious. I'm like, but I'm not doing anything. She's like, you need to take something, pay for it and leave. I'm like, but can I not just browse? She's like, no, you've been browsing for long enough. So I left the store, you know? It really upsets me how people treat you differently when you wear balaclava in public. <sighs> yeah, so I went to steal something at game. <laughs> <laughs> That's not an admission of guilt, and you guys don't even know which game it is. That's why I work at a bar now. Yeah, I'm not allowed in public. This has been fun. This is a lemon. These are peanuts. This is a shaker. This is an award. My balaclava's in the car. I'm just gonna fetch it quickly. Lock up when you guys are done, please. Bye!